Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Barry Norman on behalf of ETX, and welcome to our class on building your trading foundations. And tonight's class is trends and trend lines. Now, for those of you that join us for the first time, ETX is a regulated provider, and I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. So let me read that and get it out of the way. Trading in the financial markets may result in the loss of your deposited funds. Please ensure that you fully understand the risk or, see, and, or seek advice of independent advice if necessary. ETS Capital provides an execution-only service, and therefore any market analysis, opinion, commentary, or other information which is provided during this webinar is for educational purposes only and is not intended to be a personal recommendation. All traders must understand there is a high element of randomness to the markets, Therefore, they will experience both winning and losing trades while following a trading strategy. Different traders following the same strategy will achieve different levels of performance. Past performance is not an indicator of future results. Now, ETX is a fast-growing financial service company based in the city of London. We are authorized and regulated by the FCA, the Financial Conduct Authority. And Monocor London is a member firm of the London Stock Exchange. When you trade with us, you can trade on our ETX Trader Pro platform or download the ETX MT4 platform. You decide which you want to use and how you want to trade. Now, tonight's class is being recorded, and you can access a recording of this class by coming using the same link you used to come to tonight's class and the class will be available in about 24 hours. So let's get started talking about trend lines and the trend is your friend. Now there is a big difference between trend lines and trends. Trends is a general understanding of where and how a market is moving. Trend lines are a technical analysis tool that you apply to a chart following very specific rules. Now, as a trader, you have probably heard the old adage that it's best to trade with the trend. The trend, say all the pundits, is your friend. This is a sage advice as long as you know and can accept that the trend can end. And then the trend is not your friend any longer. So how can you determine the direction of the trend? I believe in a KISS rule, which says, keep it simple, stupid. So here is a method for determining a trend and a simple methodology for anticipating the end of the trend. So before we get started, I want to mention the importance of time frames in determining a trend. Usually when we are analyzing long-term investments, the longer-term time frame dominates the shorter-term time frame. However, for intraday purposes, the shorter time frame could be of greater value. Traders can divide into three classes of trading styles or segments, intraday, swing, and position trade. So let's go look at this on a live chart. So hold on a second. Let me pop up some charts on your screen. Okay, so we're looking at a live chart for the euro US dollar. Now we're currently looking at a one day chart. So when we look at this chart, we can draw some assumptions about the current movement of the Euro US dollar pair. And this tells us it's in a very strong downtrend. And this downtrend's actually lasted since April the 16th. And today is May the 15th, so that's a month long downtrend. That's a very hardcore downtrend that we see here. Now, if we were to look at this trend or look at this asset in different time frames, so if we were to drop it down to a one hour time frame, we get a different story, a slightly different story. We can see over the short term, it was trading in an uptrend and then it turned down into a very steep downtrend, but that only happened at 12 o'clock yesterday. And look at all the 
movement we've had from here all the way down here to the swing low. That's a lot of movement for the euro. Now, if we were to look at the euro in a 30 minute time frame, we can see that we have a downtrend from just 13, 1500 yesterday. And we can see that slightly differently, but we get more detail as we look in tighter time frames, shorter time frames. Now, if we go back and look at a two hour time frame, we almost get a very different story. We see the Euro is trading in a very strong uptrend. And now it's simply given back most of its gains. Now the prices don't change. The movement doesn't change. It's what we can see in the trend. Not the trend line, but the overall movement of the asset. So what have we determined here? That the euro is in a long-term downtrend. It's in an intermediary term retracement. And it's in a short-term very hard downtrend. So it gives us different perspectives of how an asset is moving. I'm sorry, the systems tell me I lost my audio connection, but then it shows it's getting back. So I'm assuming you can all hear me at the moment. Sorry about that. Now, let's go back to my PowerPoint. Now that you have some understanding of what we're talking about when we talk time frames, now large commercial traders, such as those companies setting up production in a foreign country, might be interested in the fate of a currency over a long period of such as months or years, but for speculators, like you and me, a weekly chart can be accepted as the long term. The goal here is to determine the trend direction, not when to enter or an exit a trade. Of course, this is not to say that there are no trading opportunities in the short term time frames, such as daily and hourly charts. But for those traders who want to trade with the trend rather than trading the correction, one could wait for the trend to resume and again trade in the direction of the trend. Now, what is or how do we define a trend? A trending market is one which price is generally moving in one direction. Sure, price may go against the trend every now and then, but looking at those longer term time frames would show you that they were just retracements. Now, if you understand that price doesn't move in one direction. It pushes up or down and pushes up and then it eases, pushes up and then it eases, determining whether we, we are in the middle of this retracement or a trend reversal is very, very important. And we have whole classes on retracements and reversals, or we have our class on the triple R's. There's Fibonacci replacements. There's always ways to see if the asset is retracing itself. But we have to remember a good movement. I'm sorry. A proper price movement. is a set of waves, a set of pushes in a direction. We don't want to see price going like that. We want to see price moving, push and ease, push and ease, push and ease, each time making higher highs and higher lows, or in a downtrend, lower highs and lower lows. Okay. This is the correct way for a price to move. 
when you see prices soaring up or down, we need to be more worrisome because it's not really the way price should be moving. So a trend is, are usually noted by higher highs and higher lows in an, in an uptrend and lower lows and lower highs in a downtrend. When trading a trend-based strategy, traders usually pick the major currencies as well as other currencies utilizing the dollar because these pairs tend to trend and are more liquid than other pairs. Now, other than eyeballing price action, you also can make use of technical analysis tools you have learned in other classes to determine whether a currency pair is trending or not. Now, there are three general types of trends, uptrends, downtrends, and sideways. Okay, sideways or horizontal trends are sometimes defined as congestion. Some charges consider that a sideways trend is actually not a trend on its own, but the lack of a well-defined trend in either direction. As long as the three trend directions, there are three trend classifications that have to do with time duration, which we've already discussed slightly. And that is a trend of any direction to be classified as either a long-term, an intermediary term, or a short-term. Now, you can have a long-term uptrend with a short-term downtrend and a medium-term uptrend. As we saw when we were looking at the euro, different time frames show different reactions. But in order to properly understand an asset, you should know what the longer-term trend is and also be able to see shorter-term trends and the most current trend that a price is moving in. So one of the easiest ways to actually see a trend or recognize a trend is the use of moving averages. Because moving averages simply take the noise out of price movement. And there is a simple formula by placing a seven period, a 20 period and a 65 period, simple moving average on your chart, then wait for the three SMAs to compress together and then begin to fan out. And they will tell you that you've now developed into an uptrend or a downtrend, depending on where they are fanning. So you can see this. Here when they compress together. And if you notice, our 65 moving average is way below here. But we can also see all three moving averages moving in the same direction. So that's confirming that we have a very nice uptrend. So if the seven period uh, smooth, simple moving average fans out on top of the 20 period moving average and the 20 period moving average on top of the 65, then price is trending up. And this is just one of the tools, and this is one of the easiest tools, to actually confirm that you are moving or that the market is moving in an uptrend. On the other hand, if the seven period moving average fans out below the 20 period and the 20 period below the 65, then price is moving into a downtrend. And so it's quite simple. We see the 65, we see the 20, and we see the seven. When they're both all three fanning downwards, that tells us we're in a downtrend. Now we're not talking about trading a moving average crossover. We're just trying to determine what type of trend we have in the markets currently. Another way to do this is by using Bollinger Bands. Bollinger Bands will help us spot a trend very easily. Now we have whole classes on Bollinger Bands. But one tool that's often used for range bound markets can also be helpful in trend discovery. And we're talking about Bollinger Bands. One thing you should know about trends is they are actually quite rare. Contrary to what you might think, prices really range 70 to 80% of the time. 
In other words, it is a norm for prices to be in a fairly tight congested range. Okay. You will see this more often than you'll see this or this. But this is what presents the trading opportunities. So if price deviates from the norm, then they must be in a trend, right? What is one of the best technical calls that we can mention in the previous grades that measure deviation? And that is what Bollinger Bands does, it measures standard deviation. Oh. I'm sorry, I'm just having a problem with my marker and my mouse settings tonight. Sorry about that. Okay. Bollinger demands make it easy to confirm a trend visually. Downtrend can be confirmed when price is in the sell zone, and uptrends are confirmed when price is in the buy zone. And the, the buy zone and the sell zone are simply the top and the bottom of the bands of the Bollinger Band. Okay. So when we see price pushing towards or out of the upper band, we are in the buy zone, which is telling us we have an uptrend. When we see price pushing down towards the lower band, it tells us we're in a downtrending market. Now, by setting up a short-term exponential moving average and a longer-term simple moving average on a weekly and daily chart, it's possible to gauge the direction of the trend. Knowing the trend does, do, knowing the trend does help in taking positions, but bear in mind that the markets move in waves. These waves can be called impulse waves when in a, the direction of a trend or a corrective wave when contrary to a trend. But this is the way markets should move, okay? And statistically, they do. Push one, which is your first ease, your push, and then your ease down to number two. Wave number three, which is usually defined as the longest wave, will push up to a new high, then drop down to a lower high, push back up to a new high, and then it will ease back down. And then we are gonna either have a correction wave, which is a push up higher, or we're going to move into B and C here where it becomes the fifth wave and a downtrend begins. And you'd be surprised how often these waves hold very, very true. By counting the waves or pivots in each wave, one can attempt to anticipate whether a trading opportunity will be against a trend or with the trend. Now, according to Elliott wave theory, an impulse wave usually consists of five swings and a corrective wave usually consists of three swings. So we have one, two, three, four, five, which is the five swings in a corrective wave. And then the corrective waves fills on three swings, one, two, three. And this is part of what's called Elliott wave theory but they're all still impulse waves, but Elliott wave theory defines it in great deal. And it is part of notice or determining whether our market is trending up or trending down. So the image gives an example of Elliott wave because Elliott wave theory can be very subjective. I prefer to use pivot count to help me determine wave exhaustion. This usually translates into a minimum of seven pivots when going with the trend, followed by five pivots during a correction which is simply just another version of Elliott Wave. One, two, three, four, five, and then you go six and seven, and then you go one, two, three, four, five. So you can actually see it more precisely on this candlestick chart here. So we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Then it would go into one, two, three, four, five. Sometimes the market will not cooperate with these technical assumptions, but it can occur often enough 
to provide very lucrative trading opportunities. This is an example of a wave in action. So you can see the blue arrows mark the direction of each wave. By combining moving average diagnosis with the pivot count and then fine tuning the analysis with observation candle patterns, a trader can stack the odds of making successful trades in his or her favor. Remember, trading is a craft which means that it is both art and science and requires practice to develop consistency and profitability. Now, one of the easiest, most reliable ways to make money trading Forex or CFD is to follow trends and let winning trades run for as long as they will run. When you trade like this, most of your trades are small losing trades. So get that in mind, be prepared. But sooner or later, they are more than paid for by a few huge winners. It takes some discipline to trade like this, but it's pretty easy. You don't need to be a genius and even very experienced and knowledgeable, knowledgeable traders profit in this style. Because remember, if you can use stop losses correctly, use your risk reward ratio, your money management ratios properly, you will make sure your small trades, your small bad trades, or the small trades that are against you have small losses. And then when you understand how patterns should move and trades should move, you will have more pips made on your good trades. So you don't mind if you lose four small trades, you lose $100 per trade or $200 per trade, as long as your next two winning trades make you $1,000 a piece. Now, it doesn't always happen like that, and those aren't the proper statistics, but this is the whole idea, is to minimize your losses while maximizing your profits, and understanding trends will keep you in the market for the right amount of time. What you need to do, of course, is at least one trend, is to at least find one trend to exploit. When the Forex market is very flat and trends are completely absent, trend traders cannot avoid losing money if they want to participate. So identifying trends becomes really vital or learning how to sit out the markets. Now, the identification of patterns and trends are techni techniques used by analysts studying supply and demand of an asset traded on the open market. A, a trend, which we've been talking about up till now, is the general direction of price over a period of time. A pattern is a set of data that follows a recognizable form, which analysts then attempt to find in the current data. Analysts use trend lines, which are essentially boundaries on price fluctuation in an attempt to spot and define trends. Upward trends are characteristic by an asset price hitting a series of higher highs or higher lows. Now, the biggest difference between a trend and a trend line is a trend is a, a general movement of the markets that's got some explanations. Trend lines are where we adapt rules to that price movement. So there are a number of analytic tools, tool businesses that can use and using trend lines can present a clear picture of trends in your business by connecting a number of points on a graph. What is revealed is a possible downturn or upturn in the direction of a group of values identified in the data. So understanding how to use trend lines can help reveal what might happen in the future. See, because trends don't, aren't, don't define price. Trends define movement, where trend lines help you define price action. Trend lines represent a charting technique, which a line is added to represent the trend in a currency pair. Drawing a trend line is as simple as drawing a straight line that follows a general trend. Trend lines can also be used in identifying trend reversals. Trend lines are a very useful tool for visually highlighting a trend and potentially 
being part of a trading strategy. There are a lot of myths and inaccurate information about trend lines though. Learning how to use trend lines effectively if you're going to use them is crucial so you don't fall into some of the common traps. Now, trend lines are a technical analysis tool used to define and project price trends in major markets such as stocks, forex, and futures. Trend lines have the potential to alert us when a pullback is over or a trend is resuming or when a trend is accelerating or reversing. But price is the ultimate indicator. Therefore, price action must always be considered when using trend lines. So let's go back over to some live charts. Okay, now we were able to look into different time frames and define the trend, which is generally the movement of the asset. And we want to define a trend and the movement. Now we would like to be able to assign prices and objectives and support and resistance to these numbers, to this visual outlook of what we see in price movement. We start doing this by applying a trend line. Now a trend line has specific rules. You start a trend line at a price reversal. So in other words, we saw price moving up here, then it moved down. So we would take the swing low because we're moving to a downtrend. In a downtrend, we draw, I'm sorry, let me back this up for you here because I'm going to get a little, get you a little bit confused. Okay, in a downtrend, we would draw the prices or the trend over top of the price locating the swing high and then extending the, the line forward. But at no time can any of the prices, whether it is a swing high, a swing low, a body, an open or close, break that trend line. It is also required that it has three points in common or actually two points to draw it and a third point to validate. So we automatically start out with our first point when we start here. Now, at no time can price have broken this, but here we get a second swing high, which gives us a, an ability to draw this line because we need to draw this line between two points without having any price violate. So we were able to do this. Now we want to project it forward. Okay. This trend line, doesn't become an active or valid trend line until it has a third touch. In this case, we had a fourth touch. The more times that price touches this trend line without violating it, the more accurate and the more important that, price, that trend line is. So now we have all of these times that price has bounced up to that trend line, was unable to break through it, and price continued down. We can then project that trend line forward into the future. And as long as price doesn't ever break it, that trend line holds. This, this trend line then will give us crucial price elements <coughs> as the trend continues to move forward. Now, again, we had push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. So we have a general downtrend. But now we've actually defined this downtrend with a number line or a line that tells us that's critical. That line has rules. That also will help us determine price. It also helps us develop what we call resistance line. We have support and resistance. Now, what we expect is every time price moves up to this trend line to bounce off it because it has a difficult time breaking through it. So this becomes a resistance line because price is resistant moving through it. Now in a downtrend, we draw the trend line over top. In an uptrend, we would draw the trend line underneath because it's so either one are supporting prices. So let's go back to some. Remember if we moved it to, okay. 
So see that the, the red is still our trend line. We drew this on. Now we just changed time frames, and that trend line still holds. But if we wanted to draw the trend line for the uptrend, we would have located the, and it's called a crucial swing low. Okay, it's the lowest price price had dropped to, but the word crucial is important because you can have other times where prices dropped all the way down, but only for a second, not held it. So we have to find where that downtrend ended and the uptrend began and, and locate the important level for that. So we have it here. Now, to draw this trend line on, we would then try to project this price through. Now, remember, I told you that it cannot be violated at any time. So this would have been a very pretty uptrend. And we had one, two, three, four, five, six crucial prices touching that line. And we would have seen this uptrend was a beautiful uptrend actually. Push, ease, push, ease, push, ease back down that trend line. And then what happened is price finally broke that trend line and that confirmed this downtrend. So we had the downtrend starting here, but we didn't have, at this point, we would have expected price to bounce off of and move up here. But when it didn't, it broke the trend line. That trend line is over. And then we could, we can confirm this downtrend. And this is the point you might have considered entering the markets. Let me take you back to my PowerPoint. So as you can see on the chart, an uptrend or an upward trend line is drawn at the lows of the upward trend. Notice how the price is propped up by this level of support. During an uptrend, we see this progress of higher swing highs and higher swing lows. When the price creates a lower swing high or a lower swing low, the trend is potentially in jeopardy. During a downtrend, we see lower swing highs and lower swing, we see lower swing highs and lower swing lows. When the price creates a higher swing high, then that trend is in jeopardy of being ended. Now pullbacks within a larger trend, such as a pullback in a weekly chart, can often appear as a trend in a shorter time frame, such as the daily or the hourly chart. Even on a daily chart, there are small waves within the larger label waves which haven't been accounted for, which in real time could cause some confusion. Reading price action is subjective. The basic concept stays the same, but how each person views the trend may vary slightly based on what they see in the time frames they are trading on. Understanding the basic concepts of price action is crucial because it applies to every trend we trade. If trading with a trend, we want to see this type of movement, higher highs and higher lows for an uptrend, lower highs and lower lows for a downtrend. And I know I keep saying that, but this is crucially important. Price charts produce noise. Noise is a small random movement that can make it hard to spot a train, a trend. Therefore, many traders prefer to simplify their charts. The uptrend in, is simplified by using a trend line, which highlights the trend and quickly shows the overall price action. So in other words, anytime there are two highs or two lows, a trend line can be drawn. The trend line is drawn by connecting one high to the next or one low to the next. When starting out, draw as many trend lines as possible in all directions. This helps differentiate pullbacks and short-term trends from longer-term trends. We also often have a bias when we look at price charts, which may not always be correct. By forcing ourselves to draw all relevant trend lines, especially at the far right of the chart, we may realize our initial bias wasn't correct at all. 
being able to see trends and pullbacks at different sizes will aid you in your overall ability and chart reading. Now, trend lines are not only based on price. They also have a time element. This creates a great myth. Traders will often say that because the trend line is broken, the trend is over. This is not true. The price could break through a trend line just because it lo looked longer. It took longer for a wave to complete. This is very common when price is moving sharply higher or lower. But this is kind of a little bit confusing. It doesn't mean that the trend is necessarily over when price breaks the trend line. What it means is the trend line you draw drew is now over and you have to draw a new trend line that hasn't been violated. If you can find that new trend line, because remember, I keep saying price pushes up and eases down, pushes up and eases down, pushes up and eases down. If it eases down below that trend line, doesn't mean that uptrend is over. It means you have to new, now draw a new trend line, which you're doing all the time. It also gives you a warning that maybe, maybe that trend is weakening or maybe it's getting ready to reverse. But we have to use other factors. We have to look at things like volume, price action, and other indicators. Trend lines are not only based on price, but also have the time element. For example, if the price is making rapid higher highs and higher lows, the trend will be angled steeply upward. This type of momentum can't last forever, and eventually the trend will slow down. So in this case that we're looking at on this chart, this was the original trend line. Okay. These were all the lower, higher lows, the bounce, the bounce, the bounce. When it bounced through here and came down here and formed the new higher low, this trend line had to be then redrawn to be here. And then you continue, the price can continue on the trend. Just tells you this trend, this trend line. So the trend itself remained valid. The trend line you were using has ended and you have to draw a new one. Trend lines will often need to be redrawn. They are not a perfect trading tool that tells you exactly where a trend will reverse. You will draw a trend line connecting highs and lows only to see that the next price wave doesn't match up with the trend line exactly. You now must decide if you want to redraw your trend line to accommodate these misalignments. My rule of thumb is I always want to. Once a trend line has been violated, a new trend line has to be drawn. That new trend line will then become your usable trend line. Doesn't mean that the trend, the price movement has ended. So here we could have originally drawn that trend line, but then as price moved forward, we would have then moved to that one and then continued forward to this one. Okay, and then redrawn it at this point. Okay, you can see that we have short-term trend lines, downtrend lines, we see the pullbacks, but our trend line must always be validated. The uptrend still continued. So the very first thing to know about drawing trend lines is that you need at least two points in the market to start a trend line. Once the second swing high or swing low has been identified, you can draw your trend line. An uptrend is defined as price making higher highs and higher lows. To draw a trend line, you want to draw a line connecting the higher lows and extending it out into the future. Now, this is where we run into difficulty because people always say, I can always find two points in common. I can always draw a trend line. The fact is your trend line simply starts out by connecting two swing highs or two swing lows. Okay, you could have always found them, but until it's got a minimum of a third bounce, and that bounce will be in the future, that trend line isn't valid. and has no value to you and is not telling you anything. 
because push, ease, push, ease. We need to know that this ease is going to hold at that trend line. Okay. Once you have that third touch, then you actually have a valid usable trend line. So it's important to adjust trend lines with new swing points. And when you when you will, when you will oftentimes find that you need to allow for some spikes through the trend line where price tested and failed to break the trend. This is why many traders will use the candle price closes instead of the exact swing points as the trend progresses. And we have more information. There are three very important keys to drawing effective trend lines. The higher time frames will always produce the most reliable trend, trend lines. So start there and work your way down. Most trend lines you come across will have some overlap from highs and lows of a candle. But what's important is getting the, the most touch as possible without cutting through the body of a candle. Never try to force a trend line to fit. If it doesn't fit the chart, then it isn't valid and is therefore not worth having on your chart. The goal of every trader is to buy low and sell high within a current price trend. Trend lines give us a way to identify the high and low ranges of the trend. As an example, if we are looking to buy a currency based on our fundamental view, it is pulling back to the uptrend line. This gives us an area to buy the currency at a low price in the current trend. The exact same true is tr in a, true in a downtrend. If we were looking to sell a currency based on our fundamental view and it is pulling back to a downtrend line, we now have an area to sell the currency at a high price in the current trend. So understanding the difference between trends and trend lines and then properly seeing them, understanding them, and using them will help you in your building your basic foundations to trade. Now, tomorrow, we're going to move on to support and resistance. Support and resistance would be the next set of lines you would put on your chart to start defining price action and making some sense out of or coming up with numbers that should or prices that should be important and where we might want to locate entry and exit points. We might want to use them for stop losses and take profit points. So on that note, I'm going to wrap it up and we'll see you tomorrow evening for class number three, support and resistance along with volume. And again, this class has been recorded. If you want to see a recorded version of the class, use the same link you use for tonight's class in about 24 hours and you'll be able to watch a recorded version. Have a good night and thank you for supporting ETX. Good night now.